Hi, my name is Vanessa Evers, and I'm the digital publishing librarian here at the Atlanta University Center, Robert W. Woodruff Library. And today I'll be discussing the topic from literary journal to open journal systems. The Atlanta University Center, Robert W. Woodruff Library, serves as the center of the academic village of the AUC, providing the highest level of information resources and services in support of teaching, learning, scholarship, and cultural preservation of the AUC Library Center, which comprises of Clark Atlanta University, the Interdenominational Theological Center, Morehouse College, and Spelman College. I am a digital publishing librarian and manage the institutional repository. I am responsible for coordinating, researching, and implementing best practices and emerging technologies in support of the development, delivery, and access to scholarly and library-based publishing. I work in the digital services department, and here are a few examples of how we serve the AUC Center. Digitization services, repository management, analytics, library publishing, and digital scholarship and digital preservation. And you can see an image on the right that shows how we serve a few digital collections and programs, digital curation, digitization and reformatting, metadata and description, providing access and digital preservation. Currently, we host the following open access journals in OJS and also Radar. You can see we have Ray Radis, which is ran through Morehouse College, and Aunt Chloe, which is the second image that we'll be discussing more today. Today's talk, I'll be giving more information about how I converted Spelman's Literary Journal, Aunt Chloe, into the open access, or I'm sorry, open journal systems platform. The journal. Aunt Chloe is an active literary journal that is published online once a year. It is managed by Spelman College faculty members, Elise Strongman and Sharon Strange, and a rotation of ed student editors. Strongman and Strange hold roles as the journal's advisors and contributing editors. The journal acts as an artistic response to the absence of truth with a mission to reclaim the time and space that Black women have been denied. To learn more about the journal's history and to view the archive collection, please visit the following link, which I will drop in the Q&A. The ask was that the Aunt Chloe editors wanted us to maintain the artistic layout of their live website through our OJS. The issue, however, was that they also wanted to archive the content from their live site and transfer all content and artistic layout into the OJS platform. This is something that comes that doesn't come by easily when working in OJS because our artistic expression used literary art journals cannot be easily transferred into the platform. After several meetings with the Aunt Chloe editors, I was able to provide them with a few samples of possible layouts for the OJS site. When meeting with the journal editors, they emphasize the importance of maintaining the artistic layout created by the student editors. And next, I'll go over the abbreviated workflow that we created to recreate the literary journal layout in OJS. The following steps require that the person be knowledgeable in PKP publishing workflow and have admin permissions to act as editor, reviewer, and move content through the final workflow production stages. Firstly, PKP or Public Knowledge Project, they create the workflow, all software and documentation for OJS. They offer several courses for all of the instructions listed on the slide and more. In order to create a Word doc using the content from the journal, I asked for original content from the journal editors and also used content that we found online via Archivit. We then saved the PDFs as PDF A using archival standards. Also, you'll need admin permissions in order to work through the PKP workflow and to continue through the workflow to create a new issue, then uploading it into each of the journals, into each of the sections for the journal. It was really important that I discuss the possible layouts with the journal editors to make sure I match the style from their live site onto the OGS site. 
and I wanted to make sure that it met their artistic needs. A publishing feature that is on the OGS site also allows you to not only unpublish, but to publish the, um, the, the site, but also unpublishing is really important because you are able to make some revisions and changes directly on the OGS site. I wanted to provide a sample page of the live site for the current issue, Aunt Chloe 2021. I, in choosing this particular image, it was really important that I show you guys the simplicity, but yet very artistic layout that the student editors created in their live site. And I wanted to really mirror that in the OJS system. And so here you see very minimalist layout, images, and then the titles of each image across the screen. In this next image, you see that I really wanted to create this simple view, clean space, lines, and also simple titles and simple font. And this is an example of the OJS site that I was able to recreate using the Aunt Chloe Live site. And also, I decided to add in an, an additional picture, and this shows some of the artwork from the visual arts section in the 2021 issue. And it's really important that I was able to show this is what it looks like in OJS. And so this, the steps are a little bit different. You do have to select the PDF file and then you open, this is what opens in your web browser. And then you do have the option to download this directly from the OJS site, which is difficult when working in the live site that Aunt Chloe uses. Also, this is a sample page of the OJS site of the archive issues. And again, similar, simple, minimalist layout, but still trying to mirror their artistic view. Some of the challenges that I ran into was the music and video files because it's difficult to place into OJS. Since this is a literary journal, it is important to present the different mediums that are available on the live site. Originally, we were solely working with text files, but over the last two years, the journal editors decided to add sections that featured music and videos. This has been the most difficult aspect to present on the OGS site because I've had to figure out how to add the content while also holding on to the artistic integrity of the journal. And so you can see an example on the right. This is directly from our OJS site where the viewer will have to select this link copy and paste it and open it into the web browser. And then you'll be able to listen to the music that way versus it being hyperlinked. And this was a technical barrier that we had to navigate. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my talk today. Uh, if you do have any questions, I provided my contact information here at the AUC Woodruff Library. And I look forward to answering any questions that you might have. Thank you so much.